good morning and happy friday welcome back to the daily grind i'm your host chump change this is live and recorded for anybody that might be new here we typically do is go over crypto news in the space i update myself and bring you guys along for the ride let's see who's here in the chat and then we'll get into this mr all track thanks for being a member for 11 months dude you're awesome Perfect. let's see what else we got uh mr andrew Massad, good to see you buddy alexander fleener we have nick k chuck danger in the house good morning sir son of a rabbit good to see you big black what's up buddy we have uh vinnie good to see you tim i am crypto scott sheffield my man uh lawnmower man good to see you buddy all set as always we have tyson coin mr max voltage what's up buddy dan r solar miner crypto j dub good to see you all right let's get into this everybody else i may have missed i apologize but bitcoin holding at sixty six thousand seven hundred eighty four dollars we have ethereum at thirty two fifty one solana having a bit of a pullback and there's a little bit of uh nonsense going on with that so we'll get into a coin telegraph article in a minute but that's at 171 dollars down 8.13 percent today we have dogecoin down to 17 cents got etc thir uh 32 28 not looking too bad avax down to 44 dollars down 5.01 percent caspa not doing too well 12 cents 12 8 i mean it could be worse but definitely gets an ooh for that we have litecoin down also on the day 96 67 interesting i'm wondering why we're having a lot of pullback and not so much on bitcoin i wonder if it's going to hold this uh this amount of steam right through the having what do you guys think we got about two weeks left 15 days if you want to be exact all right crypto bubbles on the day biggest loser looks like this one right here wormhole down 18.7 percent to 94 cents we have whiff down 17.5 percent to three dollars and 26 cents ranked 40 now instead of 33 man that's it's still crazy to me that this has a 3.25 billion dollar market cap what in the hell is happening <laughs> what is happening uh let's see mr big black says thanks to the wallet section oh no worries man in discord yeah i put a few if you guys want to add stuff to it feel free i just i just put a few things in there and then um yeah, I made it so you guys could chat about it. Whoever uses what wallet, feel free. Pendle, 8.6% up on the day. Looks like it's at $5.61. We got Bonk down 8.1% over here. Uh, let's see, Stark. We're actually going to watch a video on this today with Mr. Lark Davis at the end of the video, uh, the end of the show. I It's not a sponsored video. That's the only reason I'm going to show it. He's basically talks about this network. I don't know anything about Stark Neck. I don't know blah stark net i don't know if you guys do but if you do let me know in the chat render is down 6.9 percent today ranking 37th at eight dollars 92 cents i actually got some render at like nine dollars in a little bit of change i forget but i i kind of want to get some more i'm not sure i think render is going to do really well this bull run we have fetch ai down 6.2 percent on the day two dollars 56 cents not too bad uh jupiter down 17.4 percent today dollar 31 we have ena down 19.6 which is athena at uh, 90 cents nothing else really popping out at me uh lido maybe down 8.4 we have bgb down 8.5 dollar 21 that's bit get token all right flashbang fear and greed index looking like a 79 which is quite interesting why it's an extreme greed i'm not sure i'm really not sure this thing's been flipping back and forth 70 79 it, it's i don't know i'm not sure i think this market is very undecisive let's see uh b cash bitcoin cash you mean looks ready to run up higher after the having yesterday yeah you know what yeah their having was yesterday and um yeah i don't disagree i mean listen uh the, the forked coins that have the name in them like you know bitcoin satoshi vision which is bsv right bitcoin cash anything that has the name bitcoin in it i feel like it's going to do well i don't i don't I, i'm not into either of those coins bitcoin sv or bitcoin cash but just the name alone with bitcoin in it i think dumb money will come into it kind of the same thing like etc and ethereum right ethereum just because of the name when the etf comes about timmy and his friends that jump in and they don't know anything about crypto and they're on coinbase and they're like why is this one 30 bucks and this one's 3200 bucks i'm gonna buy this one because it's cheaper and i can get more right that's what I did when I first got into the space, like five years ago, four years ago. And uh, yeah, I mean, it worked out, but it's like, you don't know. Nobody knows, right? 
So is what it is. Anyways, trending coins real quick at Gala over here. We have Catcoin and Whiff. These are all actually down, but they're all trending. So is what it is. We have top 10 coins over here by Coin Market Cap over on Coin Gecko. We get Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, Solana, USDC, XRP, Lido Stake, Ether, Dogecoin, and Cardano. Wow, Cardano dropped a few more cents. Damn, I think it's time to buy some of this. I'm gonna buy some today, actually. I might just do it live, actually, while we're watching the first news clip. Um, let's see. So we're down to 56 cents, right? Again, I've mentioned this all week, all last week. Three dollars nine cents in the last bull run. This is two years ago in the 2021 bull run. All right. You guys look at the all-time chart. Do what you will. Not financial advice, but 2017 bull run. This thing ran. 2021 bull run. This thing ran. And yeah, I don't know. This bull run is probably gonna run. So. That's just my opinion. I'm going to buy some. You guys do what you want. I'll put my money where my mouth is. And that's uh, that's that. All right. Let's move on real quick. Scrolling down. Seeing anything else in the chat. Shiba is in 13th place at a $15 billion market cap. Mr. Rood puts, dude. Shout out to you. Thank you for the 249 euros. It's Friday. Let's party. A bunch of beers. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for making DJ Scream. Appreciate you supporting the stream. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, let's see. ICP. Is anybody into ICP, actually? I've been hearing a lot of stuff about this, and I'm not sure if I should get into it. But, like, man, the chart is not impressive. Like, I don't like coins like this, man. I won't. I will not invest in them. But, like, I want to at the same time. It just makes me feel like it's a rug, man. I don't know. Like, you just... I, I don't know. Like, when you start up here, and there's just a major sell-off, it's $16. It started up over 460. Like what? I feel like it's fighting for a heartbeat. So I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm not into this one. I think that's a foolish move. That's just me personally, but you guys do what you want. ETC again. I think ETC is a good uh, bet. If you guys didn't know, this is the actual original Ethereum and, and you know, Ether went its own way and they split and this is Ethereum classic. So again hence the name um don't be fooled with like caspa classic though because that is no affiliation with the original caspa which is caspa itself right uh pepe i've been hearing a lot of fun about that i, I don't know I don't, these meme coins i think they're gonna die sooner than later but who knows man hopefully we all get rich first all right let's move on to the mining segment of things i want to see most profitable miners you guys know like time stamp this stuff uh real quick andrew besides don't forget it was manipulated by ftx oh was it icp really interesting i wasn't involved with ftx at all so I don't know much about that, to be honest. I mean, I know Sam Bankman freed stuff. I know all that, but I don't know like the inside, like what coins are affected. I know they held a lot of Solana and all that shit, but whatever. All right. KS5 Pro 21 terahash unit making $130 a day. We have the gold shell AL box making $126 a day. Look at this lithium miner. Holy shit. Second one on the list. Honestly, I was just reading it and I wasn't even expecting it to be the second one on the list. The AL box this unit th this thing was listed for like 10k over on i forget what website i think it was crypto miner bros if i'm not mistaken getting a spam call right now you send that to voicemail you know what terrifies me all these potential spam bullshit right these calls that just like pop into your phone like it makes me so nervous now with ai and like having a youtube channel and like people being able to like call my loved ones with my voice makes me weirded out anyways um 10k for this little box miner totally not worth it but i mean it makes 126 bucks a day i don't know you guys you do what you want i just i don't know that's so much money for a little box miner and i i feel like it's gonna drop profitability by like a fifth it's gonna be well it will be like a fifth of what actually is projected on this list that's my opinion uh the bitmain ant miner ks5 20 terahash unit making 124 dollars a day we got the ks5 l 20 uh 12 terahash unit rather $70.74. I kind of want this unit. It's just too expensive. If it wasn't as expensive as this, like, I, yeah, I'd probably get it, but mm. I don't know. BMKS Max 11 Terra Hash unit making $60 a day. The Windminer K9 is making $59 a day. Man, these ones are dropping like flies. I guess, uh, with Casper only being 12 cents, I guess it is what it is, right? The Ice River KS3, we got the $44.92. The KS3 M3129. If you guys have anything to ask just at me in the chat make sure your loved ones have a passcode yeah dude i gotta set that that up with people for sure hash rate drop yeah yeah it could be that too dan r for sure oh what on a lithium is that what you're talking about dan r let me know let me know 
Um, all right, let's see. Scrolling through the Jazz Miner X16P 5.8 Giga Hash unit. I got to borrow this for a couple weeks. Wasn't worth it at my electric rate, but $24 a day now. That's crazy. Mining ETHW and Zill. Shout out to Jingle Mining for allowing me to borrow that. Let's see. We have the Ant Miner L790 50 making $16.15 a day. Hell yeah. That's awesome. I love this thing. And this is the unit I have down at Terra Hosting. If you guys are interested, links in the description. But I'm paying 10 cents per kilowatt hour down there, 30 cents up here. So it was like a no brainer. I had to send it. And man, at 10 cents kilowatt hour, this thing's making that as profit. 16, 15. It's that's awesome. Merge mining Litecoin and Doge if you guys are new here. Uh let's see. Super scaler K10 mining Carlson. Still $13 a day. That's that's kind of crazy that Carlson's still profitable on that thing. We have the Ice River KS2 making $10, 24 cents a day. The X16Q over here. I'm mining with this thing over two unminable for more Caspa, $8 a day. I'm making way less than that, probably five bucks over at my electric rate. We have the Bitmain S19K Pro. I got one of these down at Terra Hosting as well, $8 a day mining Digibyte. I'm actually still mining Bitcoin, but yeah, I probably should swap into, into Digibyte, but eh, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about that. No, the hash rate drop of max. When you're talking about hash rates going out of control. Oh, all right. I got you. I got you. I got you, Dan. Uh, we have the Ice River KS1, five, uh, $5.12 a day. Last but not least, let's look at the KS0. KS0 Pro, 200 giga hash unit, making $1.07 a day. Not too bad. Could be worse. I'll take a dollar a day. I got eight of these things running next to me. Well, nine of them, actually. I got the original as well. The original only makes like pennies right here. 50 cents a day. So it's like half a buck a day. Again, this is at 10 cents kilowatt hour. You know what? Let me see. I just want to see for shit. So I'm going to change this to 30 and just see. This is literally what I'm paying at my house. It's disgusting. This thing's going to like glitch out because it doesn't go this high ever. All right. 30 cents a day. Oh, ugh, ugh. I'm going to throw up. Hold on. Where is the KS0? Here it is. Oh, it's still profitable. <laughs> 19 cents. Perfect. Oh, I'm making 19 cents on the KS0, the original KS0. The KS0 Pro, though, I'm making 59 cents. Minus the one in my shed or my my solar trailer that has been actually it made it through the night on solar 100%, which is amazing. I wasn't expecting it. I thought it was going to drain the batteries, but apparently it didn't. So I think I'm going to get all of my KS0s out there in the next upcoming week or so and uh, get them situated on solar with timers and all that nonsense. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun video. All right, let's move on to the GPUs and see what we're getting over here. For most profitable coin, looks to be Graham. Ironfish and Husat. Ironfish and Pyron. It looks like Ironfish and just like dual mining. Actually, mostly Ironfish and Graham now on this list. Yeah, mostly Ironfish and Graham. Interesting. Ironfish, I'm not a fan of. I'll never be a fan of it. Um, Ironfish, let's see. This is kind of like that ICP bullshit. Okay, when it started, you see how this this chart shows seven dollars ninety nine cents. This shit started at one hundred and fifty dollars, if I'm not mistaken. It was over a hundred when it came out. So, yeah, take that as you will. I don't trust this coin either. That's just my opinion. All right, everything else looks like wart on the BC two fifty. Yeah, everything else is really ram and chlor and ner, I guess. Interesting. All right, moving on to new coins. See if there's anything new on the list today. Doesn't look like it. Vertex coin, still there. Puppy coin, still there. Bunch of shit coins. This is what it is. All right, the event calendar. The past events 13 hours ago, BCH. This thing, this is not right. This is not right. It said four hours ago during yesterday's stream, and that was literally 24 hours from this point. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not right. Anyways, uh, eCash is coming up in six days. They're they're having or blo block reduction. I guess this is actually having. Uh, that's a having. Some of these are like fifth innings and stuff. That's why I said that. But eCash is coming up. Isotope C in seven days. We have Bitcoin SV in eight days. We have Radiant in 14 days. If anybody's mining Radiant. That's uh, I wonder what that's going to do for the coin. It's going to either be really good or really bad. Uh, we have Bitcoin in 15 days and then Octospace. I'm holding Octospace also. See, this is like a fifth inning 2.3 to 1.85. So there's that. Oh, look, Pyron has one in 46 days. Ethereum Classic 54 days, a fifth inning as well. Going down to two 
ETC even for the block reward. Interesting. I don't know what gold cash is. Never heard of that. Uh, I, I I don't know if that's how you say that. I have no idea. 79 Bitcoin diamond 172 days. All right. I don't care about any of those other coins. All right. Let's move on to the news segment of things. It's a shame. We need more ASIC resistant coins. Andrew Mossad. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, listen, we, we do have a lot of GPU coins that are profitable. I mean, you could just look there is like, like again Graham and whatever if you guys are selling every day then there you go make some money but uh realistically these altcoins are like uh stack bags and wait for the run that's pretty much how it is there's a Bitcoin diamond I guess so <laughs> and Jamie diamond must have made it all right let's see Solana struggles record 75 percent of user transactions are failing or are they the solana network appears to be struggling to keep up with uh ravenous demand for meme coins with data showing roughly 75 percent of transactions on the network currently failing it's kind of weird roughly three quarters of all transactions on solana network have been failing amid a dulge of activity brought by the recent meme coin mania on solana however proponents say the data is being widely misinterpreted. Uh, Dune Analytics shows, or Dune Analytics data shows rather, that on April 4th, just over 75% of all non-vote Solana transactions failed. The highest failure rate on record. The hell is happening with Solana? Saw the short on the studio, looks awesome. You did a great job, man. Thank you, Nerbees, appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, it's coming along. I gotta do the floor today, actually. I gotta crank it out before I have a dentist appointment this afternoon. So yeah, I hate being broken up when I start something. But anyways, all right. The uptick has been paralleled by a recent uproar of Solana users on social media complaining of failed transactions and degraded user experience. <laughs> That's terrible. Bruh. <laughs> In an April 4th post on X, pseudo anonymous trader Altcoin Sherpa said that while he still believed in Solana, while he still believed Solana would cement itself as the blockchain network for retail adoption he noted that the current user experience was currently less than ideal as much as i think that solana is the chain for retail this cycle the experience is effing brutal brutal lately <laughs> this is well, this is all because of the meme coins by the way meme coins are just absolutely flooding solana so uh let me just kind of scroll down a little bit and see Rough TLDR of what's happening. The network stack uh, QUIC, whatever that is, on Solana is implemented poorly and does not handle spam well. If everyone spams, a lot of connections get dropped. Since a block leader can only handle so many connections at once, bots spam better than humans. So users get the worst end of the stick and get dropped the most. To win, you must spam more than others. That's fucked up. Uh, more, <laughs> more concretely, nodes bots that spam more aggressively will have a higher chance of success with close to no penalty what is happening what is happening solana somebody ripped this disc out blowing it needs a restart like the old nintendo 64 games that's crazy though that's crazy i don't know you guys let me know you think about that feel free links in the i lied i didn't put the link in the description but i'll put it in the chat because i totally forgot it's in the chat now if you guys are interested feel free to go read this and Eight on it, whatever you want. All right, I'm done reading. Let's get into this. We have Coinbase Chief Policy Officer urges U.S. crypto regulation. Let's get into it over here at Yahoo Finance. Guys, that like button. Hate asking, but YouTube makes me. Let's do it. Coinbase securing registration as a restricted dealer in Canada today. This means that the crypto exchange meeting regulators Perfect. requirements for crypto asset dealings and can operate legally within the country. This comes as Coinbase is facing a regulatory crackdown here in the U.S. To break all this down, what this means for the crypto industry at large, we want to bring in Farrar Shazad. He is Coinbase's chief policy officer fire it's great to see you again so just to make it clear you now have two entities in canada you have coinbase canada with an international dealer's license and then you also have coinbase right now registered as a restricted dealer talk to me just about the headline news of today and how big of a boost do you see this being for your platform and crypto adoption oh it's a really exciting development canada is a very sophisticated market the adoption of crypto across the population has been enormous and like in every other market, Coinbase is very committed to being a compliant, regulated uh, market player and working closely with the Ontario Securities Commission and the Canadian Securities Administrators. We're really 
pleased to have been able to get over this really important threshold and now be able to operate in this market uh, with regulatory clarity and give our customers the confidence they need to transact. So huge development, really important, and we're excited to be here. That's a big Fire, deal. To what extent do you and your colleagues anticipate today's news coming out of Canada moving the needle in other jurisdictions, particularly thinking about here in the U.S.? Well, unfortunately, the U.S. has been an outlier. Most of the G20, 80 plus percent of the G20 and major market economies have, are moving pretty aggressively towards adopting pretty clear regulatory frameworks around crypto. So most of the financial centers and most of the major economies, the EU, UK, Hong Kong, Australia, Singapore, Brazil, and now Canada. So the rest of the world has accepted and adopting is adopting tokenization, integrating it into the financial system, very much with a view towards serving the interests of the consumer. And the US, we're on a bit of a slower track. And I think that's really one of our big headline messages that the US really needs to get going, both on stablecoin regulation as well as the regulation of the broader market structure. And I think that'll allow the industry to the US to grow and develop and for consumers to get the protections they deserve. Speaking of regulations or a pathway here forward next week on Tuesday, April 9th, we know that uh, the Senate Banking Committee has a hearing scheduled right now on countering illicit finance, terrorism and sanctions evasion. Talk to us just about what you're hearing from policymakers right now and how confident you are that we are going to see some movement on this front. There's a lot of mo momentum behind a stablecoin bill and we're hoping next week's hearing in front of the Senate Banking Committee will ho hopefully be the catalyst to finally get uh, that commitment to get something done into a real sort of legislative vehicle that we can see to create a clear federal framework around stablecoin issuance in the United States. 98% of the stablecoin market is dollar denominated. The center of stablecoin issuance should be in the United States. Legislation would help make sure that happens. And we hope uh, we hope that Congress moves. So hearings are, are useful, but legislation is ultimately what needs to happen. The administration says they want legislation. Members of Congress in both houses, Democrats and Republicans say they want legislation. And I think we're way overdue to actually get some bills done. And we're excited to be a part of the process. And I know that part of that process is happening right now with the SEC. Having said that, last week, as you know, March 27th, this ruling in the U.S. that will allow the majority of the SEC claims to proceed against Coinbase with a billion dollars at stake for the firm. How confident are you that Coinbase can win in this legislation moving forward despite that setback last week? Where our goal as a company, and Brian Armstrong has said this all along, has been to get regulatory clarity we can get that clarity in the courts or we can get it legislatively. Uh, I spent a lot of time with members of Congress and with officials from the administration. It's just a matter of, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. There is a chance, as I said, that we could get a stablecoin bill, even in the matter of the next few weeks or months, potentially. That's a long shot, but it could happen. And I think we'll see for sure important movement in the House on a market structure bill. And so legislation's hard, it's designed to be hard in the United States. And I think every step that we take uh, is, is helpful in that regard. And I think we'll take some really important steps over the next few months. Uh, and and uh, you know, there's 52 million Americans who own crypto. Uh, they deserve a, a, the protection of legislation and regulation. And hopefully Congress and the administration will step up and provide that to them. All right, there's a recent poll uh, conducted by Paradigm, the crypto investment firm, asking uh, voters whether or not President Trump, former President Trump or President Joe Biden would be better for the crypto landscape if they were elected in 2024. Did she just ask that? <laughs> Did she just ask that? No comment. I'm curious, do you think either Biden versus Trump would be better for crypto? And if so, why? Somebody wake that other guy up. Well, I think this whole election season has been great for crypto. <laughs> You've had so many candidates who look around, see that there are 52 million Americans who own crypto, that they deserve to be treated uh, with respect, uh, to have a clear federal rule so that you don't have the overreach of regulators like the SEC uh, coming after them. And you've seen candidates from um, all sides of the political spectrum, Democrats, Republicans step up. The presidential candidates haven't spoken that much about it. RFK Jr. has. A number of the Republicans in the primary did uh, in very, uh, you know, very forward-leaning ways. And we're hoping over the next few months we'll see President Biden and President Trump both take the opportunity 
and connect with the 50 million Americans who own crypto and let them know that their, uh, their agenda uh, is on top of mind for them. And I think that would be a really important political development. Well, shout out to Yahoo Finance for that. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly shocked they asked that question. Trump had his own NFT collection. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Biden hates crypto, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally wrong. If you guys know any different, please let me know in the chat. But that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it, this whole election is going to be a complete fest. Okay. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. And real quick, Max Voltage wanted me to read something. I'm going to mute this so you guys don't have to hear it. Um, let me click into this. Where is it? Let's go to the S19. S19. Okay. Real quick. Oh, wow. It didn't make that stupid noise in my ear. Listen to that. All right. Let's see. He's telling me to switch to digibyte already i'm trying to see what the difference is all right i guess it is a two dollar difference between mining digibyte on it versus bitcoin two dollars fifty cents bruh damn it uh i don't hold any digibyte i just never been interested in it i guess i'll have to look into it damn it max when you're right you're right all right moving on bitcoin rises for a second day and ripple plans dollar backed stablecoin the hell is that about by the way if anybody here is new please don't fall for those stupid ripple scams or michael saylor scams like any scams you guys see qr codes will send you like two btc back or whatever you guys send us will double your investment like no eat a dick it's all fake it's a lie don't do it there's no such thing as a free lunch Let's go. Today, Bitcoin jumps to $67,000. Ripple announces plans to enter the dollar-backed stablecoin market. And Google's general counsel speaks with us exclusively on camera about the tech giant's lawsuit filed today against crypto scammers. Dude, the banks are going to be real mad about that one, aren't they? They hate Ripple as it is. That's crazy. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Cryptocurrencies in the green again today as Bitcoin jumps back to the $67,000 level. By noon, that cryptocurrency was up 2.7%. Ether rose 1% and XRP gained 1.7%. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Ripple is jumping into the $150 billion US stablecoin market. The issuer behind the XRP token announced plans to launch a stablecoin backed by US dollar deposits, bonds, and other cash equivalents. Now, Ripple is entering a field dominated by Tether and Circle. Last year, payments giant PayPal also entered the space with its own dollar-backed stablecoin. Next, the SEC is asking- Yeah, whatever happened with that, by the way? Whatever happened with that? For comments on a handful of potential spot Ether ETFs. The regulator opened the three week comment period for proposals submitted for Bitwise, Fidelity, and Grayscale. This comes after the SEC issued a series of delays for spot Ether ETFs, and many experts see a much more difficult path to approval for these products than the spot Bitcoin ETFs approved back in January. Last up, the former head of legal and compliance for crypto Ponzi scheme OneCoin was sentenced to four years in prison for her role in the $4 billion fraud. Irina Delkinska was also ordered to forfeit more than $111 million. She ran the day-to-day -day operations of the Bulgaria-based company that marketed the OneCoin cryptocurrency. She previously pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering charges. We reached out to Dilkinska's attorney for comment, but didn't hear back right away. Bruh. Others tied to OneCoin have also been sent to prison, including a co-founder of the scheme who was sentenced to 20 years in order to forfeit $300 million. Oh, shit. That sucks. All right. Real quick, I am going to swap some, uh, for some Cardano right now. Like I've showed you guys. Tangent wallet. Super easy. You just swap right inside of it. USDT to ADA. All I got to do is type in my code. If you guys are interested in the Tangem wallet, it's down in the description below. Then it tells you to scan your card. So I just scan it. As it's done, and it's transferring. Literally two seconds. Oh, almost just, I almost just threw my phone. <laughs> just wanted to show you guys. It's so freaking easy. And it'll take like, I don't know, five minutes and it'll be in my wallet. I don't even have to type in any any wallet addresses, nothing. I just swap literally right inside of it. For our main story, Google filed a lawsuit this morning against a group of crypto scammers who allegedly defrauded more than 100,000 people around the world by uploading fake investment and crypto exchange apps to Google Play. 
Google says that it is the oh, first shit. among its peers to take legal action against crypto scammers in an effort to set legal precedents to protect its users. Oh, crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with Halima Delane Prado, Google's general counsel, about the new lawsuit in an exclusive on-camera interview. That's kind of terrifying because they usually have like a real strict policy with apps. That's crazy. Big news from Google filing a lawsuit against crypto scammers who allegedly began their scam in 2019, creating fake investment platforms and crypto exchanges that were available on Google Play. Can you take us through some of the claims made in this 33 page lawsuit? Sure. So this is a unique opportunity for us to use our resources to actually combat bad actors who were running an extensive crypto scheme to defraud some of our users. By example, they created fake companies uh, and fake apps that enticed users to invest. Um, and when doing so, that investment led to them losing their money. Now, yeah. in 2023 alone, we saw over a billion dollars within the US of cryptocurrency fraud and scams. And this allows us to oh, not so only sad. use our resources to protect users, but to also serve as sort of a precedent to future bad actors that we don't tolerate this behavior. And I so like, I, I personally know somebody that got scammed like probably six months ago, maybe less than that. And it was, uh, I don't know if you guys know what the pig butcher scam is, but it's terrifying. And they take advantage of people being lonely. And this dude lost literally a quarter of a million dollars. Literally a quarter of a million dollars thinking that he was sending money to an exchange and the exchange wasn't real. And, uh, yeah, it's super sad. It super sucks. And you guys need to be careful, please. Everybody is trying to take your money. I understand Everybody. you're bringing civil Rico and breach yeah. of contract claims against the scammers who allegedly created more than 87 fake apps. That's and if you guys can't like, seriously, if you guys ever have any questions, like I am available in discord. I will, I'll reach right back out to you. If you message me, ask me a question. If you need help looking at something, if you're not sure about it, ask me and I will look into it and let you know if it's a good idea or a bad idea without giving you financial advice. I'll tell you if it's legit or not. All right. Cause I told this guy not to put money into it. He didn't fucking listen to me and he did it anyways. And that's what happened. So it, it sucks, but like, you gotta like, you gotta have some sort of trust in the space with people but not with your money, okay? Do not put your money anywhere you're not sure of. It's my opinion. But if you guys want to message any of us in uh, Misfit Mining Discord, feel free. I promise you, I'll try to steer you in the right direction as best as we can, but you need to be mindful of your own decisions and be responsible for your own actions when it comes to money. That's correct. Unfortunately, as new technology arises, bad <laughs> actors exploit that technology to try to defraud users. Now, we have teams that work around the clock to detect fraud and spam and abuse. And when we find a unique instance in which we can actually go a step further, we'll actually engage in affirmative litigation, filing a lawsuit to actually create legal protections for our users in a more constructive way. Expanding on that, why did you feel it was important to take the step to file a lawsuit as opposed to just outright banning these scammers from Google? There's an opportunity to do more, right? Our Google Play teams are constantly looking for ways to increase our ability to protect our users. Now that's through the review of apps that come up on Google Play to actually partnering with third parties like uh, ScamSpotter to give users, I guess, tips and tools of the trade to protect themselves. Now there's a third angle to that. Not only do we investigate and shut down fraudulent apps, we actually look for another way where we can use litigation as a tool to help our users. And this was a unique case to do so. And in fact, we're the first tech company to go after them in the cryptocurrency standpoint. I was going to touch on that, mentioning that Google says it is, in fact, the first major tech company to go after crypto scammers. And you're hoping to achieve legal precedence so that hopefully this doesn't happen to your users in the future. But what else are you trying to achieve through this lawsuit? Sure. So this is actually the result of a team within legal that doesn't just engage in say just this lawsuit. This is not our first rodeo, if you will. We look for opportunities to protect our users throughout. So back at the beginning of COVID, we also filed a lawsuit against scammers who went after senior citizens um, who oh, were trained God. by puppies during COVID. 
more recently this fall, so we also went after scammers who were using AI to, to fraudulently induce users as well. That's literally what I was just talking about. The whole AI thing. They basically like what, what they'll do is they'll, um, they'll take your voice. Like, you know, people that have YouTube channels like myself, right? Like my family would be susceptible to something like this, right? They would take your voice and they would call your loved one and they would be in your voice saying that you need something and to go get money to, you know, X place ASAP or something's going to happen. Right. And people fall for it. And it's sad because like people, thankfully, I don't have any grandparents anymore to like have to worry about that stuff that they'll like go and throw money out somewhere. But like, you got to like make sure your parents know about this stuff, depending on, you know, if they're still around your kids, if you're older and you have kids that are old enough to understand, like, please, like th literally you could get just completely, um, what's the word I'm looking for. They can just literally take over your life acting like they're you. It's crazy. And they can even call like your, your phone company. You have AT&T, they'll call you and get your phone shit. Like that's how they sim swap people. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. So we look at this as a constant way in which litigation and the legal system can be used as a tool for our users and to actually prevent any further actors from bad behavior. What do you think made these scams so incredibly convincing to the point where a lot of people fell victim, they contacted Google and they said once they tried to withdraw their money, they couldn't. They were asked at times to add money in order to withdraw the money that they had invested in these platforms and these fake platforms, allegedly. So what do you think was behind all of this? What made it so incredibly convincing? Was it the fact that they were adver advertising on YouTube, for example? Hold on. Vinny in the chat just said, news media last night, guy put 17K into a Bitcoin ATM in gas station after getting call from the government. <sighs> that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The government will never call you for your, your money. Like, as far as I know, they're not going to call you for your Bitcoin, especially. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Um, and then also, if the government's calling you middle of the year, typically, it's not the government, it's a scammer. Because they wait till the end of the year to call you. That's just, I don't know. I mean, maybe around this time in the season. Yeah, maybe. But like, eh, I don't think government's calling you. I actually think it's because it's a new technology. Users are less familiar with how a new technology works, be that cryptocurrency, be that AI. And so as a result, there's an opportunity with the user's lack of knowledge to take advantage of them. And that's what happened in this case. Now, Google says that it had suffered economic damages in excess of $75,000. And you're hoping to ban these groups from ever using Google and from creating new accounts what else are you seeking in this lawsuit? That's right. Fundamentally, we're seeking to protect our users going forward. We want our users to know that they can trust us to not only sort of proactively remove bad apps that are on our site, but once apps come through, that we're actually willing to go one step further and prevent those bad actors from doing it again. And that's the case here. We invest a lot of money into taking down apps that have bad content or just have nefarious purposes throughout the year, and this allows us to do that even more. On a general note, and you touched on this obviously, but what steps are you taking to ensure that consumers, that users of Google are in fact safe? So we've partnered with third parties and actually have a website that's called scamspotters.org, and it actually lists different types of tips that any consumer can look to when they're unsure about sort of getting a text message, asking them to pay for a certain bill in gift cards or a unique form of payment, or list a name of a company that a user hasn't heard of. There are steps to say, if it seems unfamiliar, research it. If it seems strange in terms of form of payment, don't send that payment through. Really offering practical, easy- I wanna show you guys real quick. I just typed in crypto news today and I clicked on the live section. This one right here. Scam, definitely a scam. I usually report them. You, all you got to do is like click this button. I want to get in here and uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I want to. I, I usually like go into them and make sure it's a scam before I report it, just because whatever. But there's always like Michael Saylor ones. I report like at least three every morning. Every single morning I report them. It's crazy. Easy to use tips for consumers to keep themselves safe. And elaborating on that further, what can consumers do to make sure that they don't fall victim to crypto scams like the one that we're learning about today? Sure, they can pause. When you get a text that says, please send money to a particular app or download an app, and that seems unfamiliar, before you click that link, research the name of that app. Look and see what the reviews say. Check in and do a little research. And when in doubt, just pause. 
What I found fascinating was the fact that Google took steps to try and control and mitigate the situation by deleting. All right, real quick. I'm sorry. I don't mean to break this up, but okay. I clicked into this. So first red flag, they shut off the live commentary. Okay. That's first red flag. Usually there's a QR code and it's like saying like send X amount of money and it's, they'll send you this much back. But all you got to do is click on like right click on there and then go like open the link in new tab, go to their page, right? Go to the community section. This is the name of the channel that was hacked. This is called World's Facts. This is the channel that was hacked. As you can see, Mystery of the Titanic. Yeah, that's definitely nothing to do with Ripple. Like this is a video or a, a Google whatever that was account rather that was hacked and had a YouTube channel and they took it over and you can see this is, yeah. Oh my God, they uploaded a shit ton to this channel. God damn. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a scam. It's a freaking scam. I'm going to report it. Leading these platforms, these fake platforms, but then the scammers would create new apps, new it's investment crazy. vehicles, new crypto exchanges in order to continue to defraud your users. So what did you do in that instance? Was that the moment where you felt like we needed to file a lawsuit? I think it's that type of behavior that let us realize that the problem was bigger than just us catching one particular app and removing it. We needed to go one step further to say that the behavior in total should be stopped. And that actually helped us in terms of actually building our case. And how did this even come on your radar? I mean, obviously, I know users contacted Google saying they couldn't withdraw their money, but was law enforcement involved? Do you work hand in hand with law enforcement? How did this even come to your attention? So we have a dedicated cybersecurity team that is constantly looking across all of our platforms and services to look for opportunities where we can do more or where we think that users are being abused. Now, in some cases, we're partnering with law enforcement, providing them with information, they are providing us with information that allow us to take that protection even further. That's crazy. Now, before we go, we asked Zach Shapiro, managing partner at the crypto-focused law firm Reigns, to weigh in on Google's lawsuit against the crypto scammers. I think it's a really good signal from Google that they're taking this problem seriously um, and that they don't want this activity happening on their platform. And it's really bad for their ecosystem uh, to have these scams going on. And so, you know, they're, they're trying their best to clean it up. Um, I bet there's also some component of this that is uh, trying to forestall any liability that Google might have for their platform being used for this. Uh, if I were the Google legal team, uh, I think this is helpful uh, towards anyone in the future making a claim, hey, Google, you didn't do enough here. Uh, and yeah, so I'm gonna try to hold you responsible for the fact that I lost my life savings through a fake crypto investing app on your platform. And so this might be sort of defensive in some sense too. Um, and then third, uh, if you look at the type of lawsuit that Google is doing here, it's a, a civil RICO lawsuit. Civil RICO cases tend to be among the most profitable types of lawsuits to bring, uh, largely because they allow what's called treble damages. Uh, Google mentions this in their complaint. If they are shown to win the lawsuit, uh, if they're able to you know, find the people and, and get money back, which is a big if, uh, mostly I think they're looking to kick these people off their platform. Uh, but if they're able to get money back, they're able to get three times the amount of money that they're able to prove in damages. Okay, that's all for That's crazy. Well, shout out to CNBC Crypto World for that. That's, uh, yeah, just please, guys, you, you need to be aware of all this shit. It's, it's just unreal how many scams there are out there. All right, let's move on. BlackRock to send Bitcoin to a hundred... Hold on, to $116,000 in the next 51 days. And then XRP News. I don't know what this is about. This is all Coin Daily. I haven't watched it yet. Let's do it. Larry Fink is one of the kings of finance. If Larry Fink says, hey, I think this has got a shot, people are going to listen. Larry Fink's BlackRock and Fidelity now own a combined 402,000 plus BTC. Jesus. So what's interesting Perfect. is uh, the messenger really matters. There's things that Bitcoiners have been saying for 10, 15 years. But now all of a sudden, when it comes from Larry Fink, it has a different weight to it. In fact, the herd is coming. The third largest Bitcoin holder, presumed to be Robinhood, what? just bought over 700 more Bitcoin. Robinhood? Does anybody still use Robinhood? Anybody here? To trade crypto anyways. Before the hacking in 15 in days, scarcity intensifies. Yeah. And so I think that we should only continue to see the traditional finance folks kind of take those same talking points and repeat them in different medium. And maybe this isn't Robin Hood. This is unconfirmed. Yeah, the you point do, is yeah. Bitcoin huh. whales aren't selling into this price action. Bitcoin whales are buying. And as if on cue, following BlackRock, Morgan Stanley wants to be the first US brokerage to fully approve Bitcoin ETFs for advisors. 
to proactively offer it to any client, Bitcoin ETFs are currently available at Morgan Stanley to high net worth clients only, but cannot be offered unsolicited. Morgan Stanley, who has a huge client base, now wants to open this up to everyone. You know, it's like- I'm gonna start counting how many times Yusuf says something's a scam in the chat. He said Robin Hood's a scam. <laughs> a couple of minutes ago it was XRP. Now it's something else. Oh my God, it's hysterical. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, uh, a scam's a scam. Things that you don't trust doesn't mean they're technically a scam. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, every parent knows that, right? You can tell your kids something over and over again and Taylor Swift says it, then it's right. Okay, uh, let's put up this chart. And it should be noted that we're now over 4%. The United States Bitcoin ETFs currently hold 4.25% of the total circulating BTC supply. That's crazy. This is Wall Street right now. As BTC is dipping, the ETFs are buying. And before we talk altcoin news, uh, it should be noted that Bitcoin surged 91% in the 51 days after the ETF approvals. How high could BTC go if this momentum continues? If Bitcoin continues this trajectory after the halving in April, it will hit $116,000 per coin by the 10th of May. And there's a risk we dip again, but the risk to reward is unprecedented. Risk reward ratio, folks, this is gonna blow your mind because you're gonna see a lot of dots, a lot of bubbles up there, all confusing, except look at the top corner, right? Look at the top right corner up there all by <laughs> itself. That's <laughs> BTC, this tiny bubble all the way up at the top. That's a riot. Bitcoin, the rest of those bubbles all jammed up. That's all the other assets, risk versus reward. <laughs> so what, what does that tell you? Like, it, does it mean, to, to uh, me, it means- perfect. That's okay, great. it still may be volatile, right? In the it last 11 scary. years, number one asset eight times, the worst three times. Yes. So buckle up, boys and girls, but you want to be there? So if you go back over 10 years now, Bitcoin's compound annual growth rate for a decade is 60% or higher. And so when you look at that, you say to yourself, okay, obviously it is going up in price. But the question is, if you're building a portfolio, the average investor is not gonna go put 100% of their portfolio in one asset like right, Bitcoin. Right. Instead of what they Thanks. wanna do, as we've seen through various uh, portfolio constructions, et cetera, is you wanna take a couple non-correlated assets, put them together, and then have a portfolio that should do well over time. Bitcoin tends to be very low correlation or no correlation to the traditional assets. It goes up a lot. It is volatile along the way. And so the key thing with Bitcoin is if you think that you're gonna speculate or you're gonna gamble or you're gonna trade this thing, you probably aren't gonna do so hot. Yeah. But if you can simply learn to just buy an asset, hold it for the long Not term, wrong. Bitcoin's been very good to those investors. And I think that it'll continue to do that. Now, if that's like the best thing you can do is just buy Bitcoin and wait. Like literally, if, you, if you're trying to actively trade it or if you're trying to like, I don't know. Like you got to remove your emotions from Bitcoin because Bitcoin's so volatile. It's not like anything else. It's going to, it's gonna literally just ring you out when it comes to emotions. So if you really can't afford to lose that money, do not put it in anything, right? But your best safest bet is to buy and hold and just wait in DCA dollar cost average. If you guys don't know what that means. Bitcoin were to That's my opinion. And this is one thing to note before we talk about XRP is that funding rates, near record high funding rates, suggest that Bitcoin pullback is not over. The recent dip in price doesn't appear to have dented optimism from traders betting on a continued bull run because the last time we saw funding rates this high was back in April of 2021. And despite the dip, despite Bitcoin hitting a record high of $73,500 about three weeks ago, and then quickly correcting down to $61,000 area. This should have reset the leverage, cleared us out. So the speculators are overwhelmingly bullish. Will we see a correction like back in 2021? Time will tell. Of course, the last time that happened in 2021, Bitcoin did not have any ETFs. And breaking. Ripple to launch US dollar stablecoin aims to compete with USDT and USDC. This will be issued on the XRP ledger because according to Chief Technology Officer David Schwartz, plans for the stablecoin will initially be issued on the XRP ledger and the Ethereum blockchain. That's crazy. I wonder how that's gonna go. And in a direct quote, what will be the ticker? Well, it's funny that the question you ask we don't have an answer to yet. What's the ticker gonna be? And what are we gonna call it? 
you're just going to have to call it the Ripple stablecoin for now. So maybe USDX or USD XRP. But Ripple has been toying with the idea of launching a stablecoin for over a year. It's finally or USDR happening and pinning that the stablecoin market's current value is around $150 billion today. Schwartz says, we think the market will be over 2 trillion by 2028, and there's only two market leaders. We don't think it's a winner take all ecosystem, particularly on the DeFi side. I actually think this is a really smart move only because stablecoin, the trend, stablecoin, the industry, that trend is here to stay and Ripple wants their piece. Wormhole just launched a token via airdrop. So this is an interoperability cross- Oh, that's what you guys were talking about yesterday. I didn't know what the hell this one was. And now it's down 13.2% today to 97 cents. Wormhole, interesting. Chain protocol. I didn't get any coins. I wish I did. You would have had to have interacted with the protocol. But cross-chain bridge Wormhole has initiated an airdrop for early users to claim over 617 million tokens <laughs> of their newly issued governance token, W. And 617 million tokens, how much of the supply was that? The tokens released represented 6% of the total supply, and this was initially launched on Solana and will be natively issued on Ethereum and Layer 2 networks at a later date. And I have started farming an airdrop. Guys, I've started farming LimeWire tokens. We'll let you know how it goes. And while I hope to put out a dedicated video of just farming opportunities, maybe a top eight, top 10 on the best airdrops. All right, we're not gonna listen to that. And by the way, you with Pal AI, the chat GPT of crypto, there was many haters in the mm. audience who said, Austin, I don't know if AI and crypto really mix. Seven months ago for Pal AI was right around here in September about I don't know what this is. The chat Showing GPT this. of crypto absolutely exploded since then. Is Mind AI the next pal, but better? What's the data say? <clears throat> Mind AI isn't just another AI interface. It's an intelligent, interactive ecosystem directly available via Telegram. So this is the chat GPT of crypto on steroids. Mm. Thank you, Mind AI, for sponsoring. All right, yep, sponsoring the channel. Eat a dick. All right, let's move on. Lark Davis, the only reason we're going to watch this is because I don't know anything about StarkNet, for one. Two, he's not being paid to talk about this. I made sure I watched the first, like, minute of this to make sure it was not a paid advertisement, and it's not. So, let's educate ourselves. I think it's a good thing. You guys should always educate yourself on new coins or new uh, projects or ecosystems as a whole. So, StarkNet, I don't know what this is. Don't know nothing about it. If you guys own it, let me know in the chat. Let's do it. The cutting edge Ethereum layer two brought to you by Starkware Industries. This layer two has been getting a lot of coverage recently. Of course, the airdrop helped. Some of the attention's been good, some of it's not so good, downright dirty. So, is this protocol the next hot innovation in Ethereum scaling solutions? Or is it something we should avoid? Is it a big fat nothing burger, perhaps? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna give you the simple down and dirty on StarkNet and let you know my thoughts on this protocol and this token. Now, before we dive in, please do note, no one has paid us to make this educational explainer video. Exactly why we're watching it. I made sure he said that before I put it on. This information is provided to you for free for educational purposes. This is not a recommendation for you to go out and buy, sell, or hold the coin that is being discussed in this video. Furthermore, Again, you're responsible for your own money. Please be adults. More, you can see my full risk statement because, of course, crypto is risky. You can lose all your money, <laughs> as well as my full portfolio disclosure in it the is. description or the Not wrong. end comment next. There, you'll find all my current holdings as well as all my venture investments, uh, affiliates, all that kind of stuff. So check it out. Okay, now what is Starknet? Well, Starknet is a layer two blockchain for the Ethereum network. Starknet was developed and is currently operated by Starkware Industries, which is an Israeli tech company founded in 2018 so they've been around for a while they're ogs in the space just for all on the same page here a layer two is a blockchain that's built on top of a larger more economically important and secure blockchain and apparently the denkin upgrade for ethereum made layer two transactions cheaper but i'm not sure like ethereum I haven't ladder, used which them. is called the layer one or l1 the purpose of most l2s 
is to increase the scalability and transaction speeds for their layer ones. Now you can think of the relationship between layer twos and layer ones like a double stacked highway. Imagine there's a large highway that's always suffering from traffic jams. So city planners come in, they build a second highway that runs above the first one. Naturally, cars will access the top highway, which therefore means that the bottom highway can handle more traffic as well. L2s. Yeah, so Ethereum layer one fees suck. Polly in the chat said Rabbit had to pay like $36 the other day in ETH fees. Yeah, like legit layer one fees blow. But layer two fees apparently are much cheaper. I'm not sure. And if it's L1s true. work together in a kind of similar way. And this is the relationship between StarkNet and Ethereum. Okay, so StarkNet more specifically is an Ethereum layer two that uses validity proof rollups. Now let's look at how StarkNet works, and that will tell us about validity proof rollups. Like other blockchains, StarkNet processes transactions and puts them into blocks on the StarkNet blockchain. StarkNet sequencers, these are computers that are responsible for doing this work. The sequencers work to filter out invalid transactions from valid ones. And once all the valid transactions are put together into blocks, sequencers then send them over to StarkNet provers. The provers check to make sure that all the transactions are valid. And then they generate a proof, which is then sent over to Ethereum's validators for finalization on Ethereum's main chain. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. The proof is really just a small piece of code that mathematically proves that the transactions that it represents on StarkNet are valid. So it's very light. Once Ethereum's validators have concluded that the proof is correct, it's recorded on Ethereum's main blockchain, which in effect finalizes thousands of different transactions in one tiny little piece of data. But the full data remains on StarkNet. The data required for Ethereum to validate and record this proof ends up being very, very small. So this is why StarkNet helps Ethereum scale and processes more transactions. Now, earlier I said that StarkNet is an Ethereum layer two that uses validity proof rollups. Rollups. Rollups refer to the idea that thousands of transactions are rolled up into one proof that's recorded on Ethereum. And validity proofs means that through advanced math, some really nerdy shit, basically, <laughs> Ethereum validators are able to verify that the transactions represented by the proof are computationally correct with just mostly the proof itself. Now, if you read through StarkNet's documentation, it's a great way to put yourself to sleep, but developers say that they use Stark proofs, which stands for scalable, transparent argument of knowledge. Hmm. Don't worry. <laughs> We're not going to do another deep dive on all that bullshit. <laughs> anyway, everything we just discussed. I'm going to be honest. I love Lark. I love his humor. And it's just like, he's very educated. He's a very educated guy. It's very important. Very cool technology, by the way. Hats off to nerds developing this stuff. But that describes the technology at a, a pretty high level. Now, you'll notice that I never said StarkNet is like super decentralized or anything. That's because it isn't in its current state anyway. It's not in the future. It could be, obviously. Currently, the sequencers and provers are all centrally operated by Starkware computers. Starkware developers say that they have plans, of course, to transition the protocol into being a decentralized proof of stake network in the future. But this hasn't happened yet. A lot of these early networks go through this phase. It's important to understand. Okay, now that you understand how and why StarkNet works the way that it does, let's now discuss the token, STRK. STRK currently has two main purposes, transaction and governance. Now, transaction fees on StarkNet can be paid in either Stark or Ethereum. To be clear, it is... Mm, I should have looked at the chart first. It's another one of those coins started up up here. I guess it's only a buck. It's only a buck drop. Could be worse. I don't know if that's legit though, or if that's when it came out. Four dollars forty-one cents about two months ago. Wait, when did so it just came out? Max in February twentieth. 
Interesting. Well, this is StarkNet. Everybody's wondering. It's optional, not mandatory, and Stark can be used to vote on protocol proposals. So those are the use cases. Ah, uh, the air dropped it and everyone sold it. Okay, well, that makes sense. That's a little different then, I guess. In the event the StarkNet does at some point transition to a proof-of-stake blockchain, then the sequencers and the provers would, of course, be required to have big stakes of Stark in order to perform their operations. Uh, this would thus, of course, increase the utility for Stark and would probably... And See, there's a difference between, like, airdropping it to people that want to take profits and the devs dumping it on you guys once it lists because of a pre-sale. So there's, there's a difference there. So, like, if that was the case with Stark and why it was up here and came down here... Then that makes sense. I get it. I'd take profits too. Why wouldn't you? But if the devs are doing something shady in the background, then F that. I wouldn't get into it. You know what I mean? If you're some kind of delegated proof of stake thing where you can stake your coins and get a reward, but that transition hasn't happened yet and it's not clear when it will happen. You could be literally waiting years. Remember, these guys were announced in 2018. Takes a while. With regards to tokenomics, StarkNet developers minted a max supply of 10 billion tokens. Currently, only 7%, around 700 million of these tokens have been unlocked. <sighs> it's crazy That's stuff. It. Wow. A lot of coins, man. That's pretty common for these early networks. That was a lot. The other 9.3 billion will be released on a monthly schedule from now until 2031. Now, out of this initial 700 million coins, half went to StarkNet users in the form of an airdrop. The other half went to developers, East stakers, and StarkNet users 50%. Open source developers, Ethereum developers 3.3. Hmm other groups working on the protocol. Now, with regards to allocations for the entire 10 billion tokens, here's the current plan, at least according to the developers. So it appears from the documentation from StarkNet that a total of 1.8 billion Stark or 18% of the supply is reserved for retail. And most of these tokens will be allocated through StarkNet's provisions program and rebates program about 56 percent of the tokens are going to go to early contributors and investors and to the foundation treasury and to the strategic reserves the other 26 percent is reserved for grants uh, operational needs and other purposes so that's where the tokens are now before we continue let me interrupt the flow real quick to let you know about something very important his newsletter Okay, now let's discuss some key statistics and key partnerships. According to DeFi Llama, StarkNet ranks 18th out of all blockchains in terms of total value locked on chain. That's metric that can change very fast, so do keep that in mind. But they have $300 million currently. This means that when only looking at Ethereum Layer 2 specifically, StarkNet is ranked 5th in terms of total value locked. StarkNet has about 100 dApps, most of which deal with DeFi, blockchain, infrastructure, services, both Starkware, and third-party developers are free to build dApps on the network. Now, what about partnerships? On the technical side, StarkNet does have some pretty impressive collaborations. The network, for example, has partnered up with Celestia for, of course, data availability services, because that's what Celestia does. Go watch a review on Celestia if you want to learn more about that. They're also working with Chainlink to make Chainlink price feeds available on the network. And StarkNet also has a partnership with Bravos, crypto wallet for the development of advanced wallet infrastructure and access for the StarkNet protocol. These are pretty common partnerships for blockchains, by the way, but still great to see. StarkNet does have a lot of heavy hitting financial backers as well. The protocol received a lot of investments dating all the way back to 2018 from some of the biggest titans and names in crypto, including Pantera, Paradigm, uh, Sequoia, Coinbase Ventures, even the man himself, all right, Mr. Mr. Big Dick Vitalik Vuter himself threw some money in here. Okay, now let's discuss risks and opportunities. In terms of risks, the first issue is the tokens use cases, which is currently confined to only transaction fees and governance. Don't love it. And even the transaction fee use case isn't necessary because users can actually pay with ETH instead. So it's just this optional thing. And a lot of people are probably just going to use ETH. So until StarkNet transitions over to a proof of stake network, there's not a huge amount of utility here for paying in Stark or using Stark at all. 
Now, utility doesn't always matter. It just usually does, and Stark tends to lack that as a governance token. The second risk is the network's tokenomics. There's been some controversy about this. Uh, a lot of headlines have come about it. Starting April 15th, we're going to see tokens coming out and continuing every month through to March of 2027. Millions of Stark will be released to Stark net investors and to early contributors, which is fine. They deserve to get their tokens, right? 64 million tokens a month are coming. The problem is that these releases have only started two months after the first batch of Stark tokens were actually released out to the retail crowd. Not the best look, to be honest. Usually teams and VCs have longer vesting periods. Moreover, only 18% of the 10 billion in total Stark token is allocated out to the little guys. By the way, the release schedule was actually reduced. So the 64 million is a reduced number after a huge backlash from the community because initially they were going to release 1.34 billion tokens of 13% of the supply. Fun story. Those tokens, by the way, were on a two-year vesting schedule. It's just the StarkNet decided to start the two-year vesting two years ago, long before the token ever went public, which is some some BS move by the StarkNet team, to be honest. Stuff like that left a bad taste in many investors' mouths. It's not the kind of stuff you like to see in crypto. And that brings us to issue number three, of course, governance. With so few tokens allocated to retail, this pretty much confirms that the project will be exclusively controlled forever by the development team and the big VCs backing it. Now, of course, even if you really wanted, you're so passionate about governance that you want to go govern the StarkNet platform for some unbelievable reason. You'll need hundreds of millions of dollars invested to even think about having any kind of say, having any kind of impact. Why would you do that? That's a crazy person thing to do, man. Don't go spend hundreds of millions of dollars by a governance token to govern StarkNet. No one cares. Now, what right. about opportunities? There are opportunities. We're being harsh on but there's opportunities. Very possible that StarkNet could continue forward it transitions into a very powerful eth layer two it captures a lot of market share given that starkware of course is a very sophisticated blockchain development company that does have the big partnerships that it does have the big backers this could really work in its favor centralized control can also be an advantage sometimes i know i don't love it you probably don't either but in terms of making smart and timely upgrades it can be useful moreover i'm bullish on eth layer twos in general so if starknet is able to keep progressing bringing more use cases for their token we might see the protocol cut into Arbitrum and Optimism's you know, bases layer two market share. But given the issues discussed with the tokenomics and all that kind of stuff, meh, I'm not super convinced at this point. But we shall see how StarkNet continues to play out in the layer two space. Obviously, it had a lot of hype when it came out, and they have a lot to prove still. Well, shout out to Lark for that. All right, I want to show you guys something. So this isn't a... Uh... I, I do not recommend you guys get into this. We're going to get into the recap segment of things, but I do want to mention this because I did get into it just because Solana meme coins are killing it. And this is a pre-sale. I don't know if anybody's interested, but I have no affiliation. I don't recommend you guys purchase any. If you want to get into it, feel free. This is called donk.meme. I, I don't know. Don't know. I put like a hundred bucks into it just to see what happens. Right. But it says join pre-sale. And they're like raising this, uh, I don't know, total raised 100 and Jesus Christ, this is 1137 Solana. God damn, it's a lot of money. Uh, seven days the sale ends. Buy Donk Token. I don't, I don't, I, again, I have no idea what this is all about. Just a meme coin, people trying to get money. It's probably going to get dumped as soon as it comes out. But it is a pre sale. It says there is a 1.5% allocation, if I'm not mistaken, of, oh, where is it? Where is it? After the pre-sale ends, where did it say it? Actually, it said something about 1.5 something for the tokenomics. Um, pre-sale allocation is 700 uh, million. Total supply is 1 billion. Uh, liquidity is 300,000. I mean, 300 million. Interesting. I forget, where did it say it? Mr. Greenhash told us. Oh, right here. 1.5% uh, DEX listing on Radium. So... I don't know. Take it as you will. If you guys are interested in this, feel free. It's a freaking meme coin. It's probably going to lose all your money. So just be careful. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to lose $100 to take a shot. So fuck it. There you go. There it is in the chat. If you want, feel free. Again, it's a meme coin. No affiliation here. Totally do that at your own risk. If you want, that's a pre-sale. First pre-sale I've ever been a part of, actually, because the guys in my VIP mentioned it. So why not? Let's try it. See what happens. 100 bucks. Can't really lose out, I guess. All right. Bitcoin. Recapping things, $66,785, holding pretty nice, even though it looks like it's in the red. We got Ethereum, 
32 52 which is looking pretty good bch looking very well at 60 660 dollars damn damn uh go check one of the solana rug pull sites let me see uh do not shout at us if you lose all your shit yeah exactly crypto kj that's is literally do it at your own risk because i don't know anything about that coin what's the what's the rug pull site let me know what it is and i'll look it up right now we do it right now why don't you go check one of the solana rug pull sites what is that i don't even know what that is is there like a site that tells you all the rug pulls that'd be sick xrp 57 cents ada i just bought some during this stream with my tangem swapped usdt into it 56 cents it did come through about five minutes later by the way um ltc is down today everything's pretty much a little bit down 13 cents for caspa not too bad not too bad uh doughboy says there's a cool new gpu miner meme coin called gpu inu <laughs> created for gpu miners website looks cool i put 100 dollars in it just for fun yeah i mean honestly dude the meme coins you guys all need to be careful all need to be careful because yeah you're, you're gonna you're probably gonna lose your money uh go to categories in coin gecko you can go to meme right and you can see all these meme coins that are here i'm gonna be honest dog with hat surprised me surprised the hell out of me so did pepe bonk floki all these ones actually book of meme boom um all of these coins have literally done crazy well right and these are all just fake bullshit coins so they could disappear tomorrow people could sell all of them um oh sweet thank you this is what i found nice all right let's see what the hell is this rug check how do i do this how do i do this check solana you know what i'm gonna put this in brave browser so it's here all right so how do i do this um token address Oh shit. All right, let's see what it is. It's going to fucking say scam, isn't it? I'm going to lose $100. <laughs> let's see. Risk analysis is probably going to be absolute shit. It's a meme coin again at the end of the day. Watch, I'm getting hacked right now live. What is this? Loading. This thing looks like it was made back when Oregon Trail was a thing. <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> oh man all right well i guess we'll just uh let that load but anyways yeah these these meme coins guys you gotta be careful i mean that's the only pre-sale i've ever really been a part of or checked uh check twitter what what am i checking on twitter um dj mines dj mines i'm not logged into twitter let me see i am not logged in Twitter. All right. Give me a second. I don't even know what the, what's this? Just donk. Donk dot meme. Let's see. This shit. I don't know what you're telling me to look at, Mr. Uh, Mr. DJ, but chain wire Solana meme project donk dot meme raises a thousand soul in 10 days. Exciting news. Donk pre-sale has already raised over a thousand soul. Uh, just 10 days with seven more to go. The new donkey themed Solana meme coin is making news with its unique pre-sale mechanism. Learn more. I don't want to click on anything. I don't want to click on nothing. I already sent them a hundred bucks in Solana. So we'll see what happens. But again, it could be total shit coin and uh at the end of the day it is a donkey so you might be a donkey <laughs> if you invest in it oh uh, let's see check voss coin tweet about cardano voss coin tweet about cardano let's see let's see how do i open that up all right so i go to my notifications if I open this, how do I get to what you... Oh, wait, here we go. Honestly, it's crazy. Cardano ADA just got dropped for Solana, uh, but it shows the lack of interest in no one and the parabol parabolic regrowth on the other. Grayscale drops Cardano and Cosmos, ADA and Adam out. Really? Grayscale predominant digital asset management uh, firm has removed Cardano from its digital large cap fund and Cosmos, Adam from its smart contract platform 
X Ethereum fund following a quarterly rebalancing. Uh, the decision was made after both cryptocurrencies experienced negative returns since the beginning of the year. The proceeds from the sold tokens were used to buy existing portfolio components as part of the Grayscale strategy to optimize the composition of its investment funds. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't think that's really anything. I mean, it's Grayscale's a big player in the game, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I think they're they're starting to realize that their fees are too high and they're gonna start going down a lot lower than the rest. And uh, yeah, I don't know. They got to make moves, but yeah, thank you, DJ. Appreciate you tagging me in that. That's that's very strange. I don't know how I feel about it to be honest. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. All right. Any last questions before we get out of here? Miss Randy Hipper doesn't look like she's going live today, so we're not gonna be raiding her but um let's see so many donks already don't get them confused base has a meme coin called donk 2 meme coins are nuts dude it's crazy yeah you guys gotta be careful like i said do that at your own risk i have no affiliation that's just something that i was like you know what i've never been a part of a pre-sale so i'll give it a shot 100 bucks i'm willing to lose but like anything more than that nah like i ain't doing that that's crazy but anyways all right you guys i appreciate you all you're all fantastic hopefully you guys have a safe and happy friday you guys know i gotta leave you with this before we get out of here so i will catch you guys bright and early tomorrow morning 9 a.m eastern standard time on saturday and until then enjoy this peace out Happy Friday. Have a good and safe day. Catch you guys tomorrow morning. Peace, peace.